So we're up to episode five now. Once again, it's been a little while. Facebook uh, kindly reminded me that it's been a year since I pulled the M40 out of this thing. So, uh, been drowning my sorrows with that one. But uh, it has been a little while. I have been busy, not so much on this thing. I have a tendency to get distracted. So I went rallying the white E36 that was in episode one. Kind of entered the, uh, an Australian round of the rally in the intro class. It was uh, 54 kilometers of competitive stages and I binned it on the 12th corner. Broke the uh, lower control arm, bent it all the way back and popped the ball joint out. Found an embankment, so uh, that was pretty fun. Also uh, went to Bathurst and watched the Bathurst 1000. Pretty damn good race on top of the mountain there. But uh, that's all done, I'm hoping for the rest of the year. This is gonna be my primary concern. So let's get down into it for uh, episode five. So the steering rack and the cross member are all done now. They're all bolted up. I hopefully won't have to unbolt them again. You can see here the little spacer I uh, built because the, uh, the shank goes too far through on these. So I built a bit of a spacer and uh, got the nut on there. You can also see the last puzzle of the uh, power steering lines, which was just uh, cutting that off, getting a uh, piece for it to slip in there and extending it. So that's all done. So I've also been test fitting with the inlet manifold back on the engine, make sure that all the outlets have somewhere to go. Because I'm gonna get this inspected and compiled with this engine, I need to get it inspected by Regency and they're gonna to wanna to make sure that all the emission side of things are correct, uh, that nothing's breathing the atmosphere. So I've just been putting it on, test fitting that everything works the way that it should. However, there is a couple little things I've got to fiddle with. So first thing you've got to worry about is the charcoal canister. So on the left, we've got the E30, on the right, the E36. Now, to me, the E31 is gonna be a lot easier to fit in the car, just cause it's already got a mounting bracket. From what I've been told, it uh, physically fits with the new engine, so that shouldn't be a problem. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that E30 check valve there, and I'm gonna run the E36 check valve, just because from what I can tell, I think the ECU controls the check valve because it comes from the, uh, the engine loom, the, uh, the plug there. So I think if I change that around, then hopefully it'll work as per factory, and it shouldn't be too difficult, and everything will physically fit in. Next thing to think about is two little vacuum lines that are on the bottom of the intake manifold. One of them, I'm not 100% sure what it does. I'm gonna to need to look into it a bit more. The other one I realized goes into this canister. Now, what it actually does is on the car that the engine came out of, it had an exhaust uh, butterfly basically in it that changed the sound and loudness of the exhaust. And this was, as far as I can work out, the accumulator for it. This actually sat just near the starter motor, just under there on the right hand side of the uh, serial number for the engine. But obviously you're not gonna be running that exhaust, so I've got rid of that. So I'm gonna figure out, probably have to block off that vacuum line. Last thing I need to think about at the moment with the inlet manifold is the dipsticks. So on the left, we've got the E34. On the right, we've got the E36. You probably notice the ends of them are physically different diameters, so E36 isn't gonna work with the E34 sump. The other thing you probably notice is this outlet here. So from what I've been able to deduce is that outlet connects to this outlet here. And I believe this is for the crankcase pressure because that end there is what connects to that on the rocker cover there. So, what I'm gonna to need to do is get someone, not me because I can't weld, to basically cut that off there and put it onto this dipstick over here. Now, a lot of people would be able to get rid of this with a catch can or some other method, but obviously, if I'm gonna go for emissions, I've gotta make sure I do this right, otherwise it's gonna be pretty easy to figure out. So, yeah. So with the inlet manifold on, you can see the dipstick is hanging out right there just off the inlet manifold. So I'm pretty happy with that. I got a friend to weld the outlet on from the E36 dipstick. 
that was all pretty easy. I think you had to TIG that, but uh, yeah, it's all done. We look under here, you can see it just there. It is pretty close to the engine arm there. Probably if I was gonna do it again, I'd aim it just a little bit more sort of up the pipe, but yeah, that, that's not too bad. I should be able to work a, a hose in around the engine arm there pretty easily. And then I've just uh, made this quick bracket. So the top of the bracket there is just a capsulated nut that BMW had. Um, and I put a bolt through it and then it has a little, uh, I don't know, anchor point or something on the actual dipstick itself from the E36. So I just put a nut and bolt through. It's actually holding it pretty solid now. Uh, try and rock that, the whole thing rocks. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna clean this bracket up, fog it black. Just uh, it's a bit easier to show in this state rather than when it's black. But yeah, pretty happy with that. The O-ring all went in pretty easily with a little bit of silicon spray. So another job off the list. And this is the final product of the bracket for the dipstick. So we're at the stage now where we need to wire in the engine loom to the body loom. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Option number one is gonna be an adapter. So there's plenty of adapters out there that convert the X25 plug from the M50 and M52 engines to a C101 plug, which is what the uh, E30 use. I didn't go this way. They're fairly bulky, they're pretty expensive, and they're not gonna fit underneath the electrical cover along the firewall. So that wasn't the option I went with but it's a perfectly uh, usable one if that's the way you're inclined to do it or if you don't want to do it yourself, you just want to buy something off the shelf that'll work, that's an option. Option number two is going to be to cut off both the uh, X25 plug on the M50 and M52 side and the C101 plug on the, uh, the car side and go down to your local uh, electrical store and buy your own plug, wire them up, and that should work, there's no reason that it wouldn't, um, but you're not gonna be able to use the factory mountings for the, uh, the connection, and you're not gonna be able to use any of the, uh, the diagrams, though you probably could adapt them and make your own diagram. So I didn't go that way because it doesn't use the factory mountings, I wanna keep it all as factory as possible. So uh, yeah, but if, you want to, if you're uh, you know, not wanting to spend too much and get it done, that's certainly an option for you. Option number three is going to be the option that I used, which is buy a C101 plug from a place like Pelican Parts uh, and also the crimps to go with it. Then cut off the X25 plug on the engine side of the loom and correctly wire in the engine side C101 plug onto the engine loom that you've got. So I went with this way. Once you're done, it uh, just goes straight into the, the factory mountings for the plug. It looks completely factory and uh, you know it's, it's a very neat way, good way that BMW did it, so uh, you get to keep all those bits and pieces. So I went that way, it's not that hard, it's a lot easier than it actually sounds, it just sounds a bit scary having to uh, have so many wires and having to, uh, to make sure they all go in the same place. So I'm gonna run through what I did to uh, achieve that now. So the first part of uh, getting the C101 plug done is actually getting your hands on one. I got mine through uh, Pelican Parts. I'll put the part numbers up on the screen for you. And these are the crimps that I didn't end up using with mine because I bought extra just in case. So you can see how they sort of work. They've got four little tags on the side that lock them in. And I use this kit to, uh, to crimp them on. And in particular, I used these jaws, the non-insulated double crimp jaws with my ratchet crimper. And they worked really well. And just make sure there's a couple of different size of crimp because there's a couple of different size wires that have to go into the plug. And you just make sure that you choose the correct one from the, uh, the three there. So you've got your C101 plug. You've lopped off the X25 plug. You've crimped on all the associated wires that you need to. And now you need to make sure you put them in the right spot so that everything goes correctly when you go to fire your car up for the first time and things don't go haywire. So what you need to do is I came to this website which is E30 Zone, that's the link there, and I used this uh, guide to do it. So how it works is basically this is uh, 
the plug number that you need to use on the C101 plug. When you look at the plug, it's got little numbers for each uh, hole and associated crimp position. And what you need to do is you go find, say, the green and white wire there, and you need to make sure that that goes into slot six on the C101 plug. Then the next one, you get the green wire, and you make sure that it goes into number seven on the C101, and so on and so forth. Now there's two things with this uh, diagram that can stuff you up, and they managed to get me both times. First thing is this wiring diagram does the temp sensor a bit different. It just uses the standard wire that comes from the DME, um, from the standard sensor, and wires it straight into the gauge. Where we didn't do that, we wired in and put a, a completely separate temp sensor and wire. So you've got to keep that in mind because this diagram just gets you to put the standard temperature sensor wire into the correct plug number where you need to put whatever plug, whatever wire that you wired from that uh, extra temp sensor into that one. So uh, I do believe that the correct uh, wire is, you need to, that you need to keep in mind is number four, because that's the cluster temperature gauge. So you need to wire your own wire from that new temp sensor that you put into the, uh, the block of the engine into number four rather than the brown slash purple wire. The other thing to keep in mind, which caught me out, is the first uh, color is the predominant color, and the second color, a right-hand side of the slash, is the strip. And you can see there, there's a green slash white wire, and a white slash green wire, and I managed to get them the wrong way around. And the problem with that is, once you put these buggers in, there is damn near no way to get them out unless you have the proper BMW uh, crimp removal tool, which I eventually had to buy, and they're not cheap. So, if you are going to do this on the cheap, don't get it wrong, because uh, you're going to have to buy the, the crimp tool again, or the, the crimp removal tool, or you're going to have to buy a whole new... C101 plug and crimps and all the assorted bits and pieces. So I have been doing a lot of other stuff. It's just not stuff that's necessarily E30 specific. So I got, you know, fan belts there, thermostat cover, got the alley type, painted the rocket cover, bunch of new hoses and bits and pieces through there. So all those kind of bits and pieces that you probably should do to an engine when you got it out the car. I've also put the heater box unit back in the car. So that's all in there. It was a pain in the ass to put back in in some respects, but it's all done now, thankfully. Pipes are all, uh, all done for the heater, so I'm pretty happy with that. Also got the fan and all that back together, so you know, time consuming and a bit annoying being plastic. You've got to be so careful with the bloody clips, but got that all back together. I broke a few little bits and pieces when I pulled it out. So it's taken a bit of time to find new ones and fit them in there. But uh, yeah, also glad that's all done. And I got my DME here that I'm just about to send off, hopefully get uh, EWS taken off it. Also get a 7,200 limiter, which would be nice. So yeah, that's also what I've been doing in that time. I haven't been just sitting on my ass, but uh, there's no point going into that detail on that stuff too much. Otherwise, I've uh, made a bit of progress, pretty happy, hoping to have this thing done by Christmas. He says very optimistically, but anyway, I'll see you next time.